thanks so much. How are you doing? Are you well? Oh, excellent. It's lovely to be here. Hello, my name is Glenn Moore. It's lovely to be in Montreal. I hope you're all enjoying your festival. Uh, I hope you're all enjoying this year so far. It's been a very une uneventful year for me uh, so far. I've only had one interesting thing uh, happen to me so far in my life this year, and um, it's something from my personal life, and this is a really self-indulgent way to start, so apologies about this, but um, essentially there is a, there's, a, there's a girl in my life. There is a girl who I dated when I was about 13 years old, and we went out for about two weeks, and we broke up, and we didn't talk again for years. And then at the beginning of the first lockdown, completely out of the blue, we suddenly got talking again, and we started talking loads, and we got really close. Uh, and the only reason I mention her straight away is because in about 18 months' time or so, she's going to officially become uh, Mrs. Moore. So thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, she just got engaged to my dad. And um, I... Yeah, um... No, thanks for laughing. Fuck you. I think um, I had. <laughs> no, I got uh, I got broken up with fairly recently. I, I got dumped. I got dumped by email, uh, and the worst thing was I was only CC'd into it. That was tough. I um. <laughs> no, I think the worst thing about a, a breakup is when if you live with someone and then you break up and then one of you's got to move out because suddenly you've got this whole empty home to yourself. You look at the bed that you both used to sleep in together. Suddenly, their half of the bed is just permanently empty and alone. And even to this day, I still stare at that top bunk. I miss her, man. And you. <laughs> Yeah, you might be thinking to yourself, oh, sleeping in bunk beds as a couple. That's the least cool thing you can do. Incorrect. It is the coolest thing you can ever get to do with your life. You get to have sex with someone, then depart via a ladder. Yes, please. All right? It's <laughs> the closest I get to feeling like James Bond. I love it. Well, after that breakup, I thought, you know what? Going into the next relationship, I'm going to be really confident. I'm going to change my personality completely. I'm going to be really open and honest. I'm going to be really opinionated all the time. That's me. I speak my mind at all times now. Like now, for instance, whenever I get a shit haircut, so every time, whenever I get a shit haircut, fuck you, whenever I get a shit haircut, <laughs> and I don't like the haircut, I've now finally got the guts to be able to look that barber dead in the eye and say, that's great, thank you. I'm not afraid anymore. I'm not afraid. <laughs> I'm not afraid to be bold like that. I'm not like other 27-year-olds. I'm 34, but like I'm not afraid to be bold. <laughs> I want to be as bold as my ex-girlfriend. She was the bold one in the relationship, the confident one. I was never bold in relationships. Well, I realized recently I'm about as assertive in bed as I am around taxi drivers. Um, it's very much a case of, oh, just anywhere around here is great, thank you. It's, it's pathetic, you know, she's... <laughs> She said I was too sensible for her. That was the problem. She called me out on it all the time, asking me questions all the time. Glenn, why are you so sensible? Why are you so formal all the time? Glenn, why do you use all 10 fingers when you do air quotes? Yeah, whatever, just fucking leave me alone. It's like relentless. <laughs> I was just a sensible person my whole life. When I was growing up, I wanted a serious, sensible job, maybe something like a, a, a fireman, and I'd be able to, sorry, firefighter, sorry, it's 2023, sound like a firefighter, or maybe like, like an office job, work my way up, become like a chairman, you know, sort of chairfighter. Sorry, anything like that was what I wanted to do. <laughs> I was, I wanted to be a chair fighter so bad. I, um, because I, I was terrified about that first date. I was quite late to relationships in the first place. You know, I was always quite, I was very, sort of, uh, very sort of no sex before marriage, uh, it turned out. Um, and I, th um, <laughs> but I, I was panicking because there's so many things you've got to worry about when you go on a date. How was I going to impress her? What was I going to wear? How was I going to dress to impress? You know, do I wear my glasses? Do I wear my contact lenses? You know, do I compromise? One contact lens and a monocle. Done it before. I, <laughs> Now, on the day of the date itself, I plucked up my courage, I walked over to her home, I knocked on her doorbell, which isn't how doorbells work. She answered the door, <laughs> and immediately I felt like I blew it because I said hello, because no one says hello in the modern era. You say something more relaxed. You say, hi, hey, how's it going? Good evening, that sort of thing. There's only three occasions in life when people still say hello, and that's when you've just picked up the phone, um, when you've just entered a spooky mansion, Or, um, or when you've just inhaled helium. Those are the only times. <laughs> On this date, she was being super flirtatious. We went to this bar together. She was eating from this like bowl of cherries at the bar, and she did something so flirty. It was called the cherry stem trick. I don't know if you know this. She got like a cherry stem. She put it into her mouth. She tied it into a knot with her tongue. It's got very flirtatious connotations. Then she took things one step further. She put a whole Kinder egg in her mouth, pulled out a fully assembled toy. <laughs> It became quite apparent, you know, one thing was going to lead to another. I'm not going to go into the details. We slept together. It was as stilted and formal as I worried it would be. It was probably the only time I've ever had to be reminded during sex, actually, we are a shoes-off house. But it was, um, it, was, it was nice, you know. We... I, 
won't go into the details. You, you know, we did a favorite position, her on top, um, and, uh, and, and, and me on top. It's how bump beds work, but it was, it was, it was nice. We had a nice time. <laughs> But I was too sensible for her. Like, even when we first started going out, I had a different job to this. I had a really serious job, sensible job. I used to be a reporter on the news. Back in the UK, that was a serious job. And when I first got that job, I was like, great, I'll get to travel the world, get to learn new languages. I can come to Canada. I can learn French. It'd be great. Like, before then, I couldn't really speak any French. I could sort of speak some French. I could sort of say, you know, hi, my name is Glenn. Uh, I would like two baguettes, please. But um, apparently, that is still English. I, 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 <laughs> I'm finding French really difficult here in Montreal. Every day they change the meaning of soup du jour. How the fuck am I meant to keep it? I... <laughs> it was a fun job. Once I got to be a red carpet reporter, it was mind blowing. I got to be on the red carpet for the National Voiceover Awards. I got to interview the guy that had just won the award for best work in disguising a witness's voice on the news. Like proper A list celebrity stuff. And I said, You must be so delighted with your award. And he said, It was just so many people I'd like to thank. And he was gracious. <laughs> I don't know why I had to have that job. My parents are very strict when I was growing up. You know, I wasn't allowed to eat any fun food, wasn't allowed to buy any dessert, wasn't allowed to buy anything from the ice cream fighter. It was bullshit. It was really harsh the whole time. No, I don't know why I listened to them. I don't know why I listened to them, right, okay? I don't know why I listened to my parents. I don't know why I listened at school. Nothing I learned at school helped improve my life skills or anything like that. In fact, I feel like everything I learned at school felt like it became redundant immediately afterwards, you know? I've got, like, younger cousins. They're, like, eight and nine years old. Everything they do at school is relevant. It's based on the future, done on laptops, computers. When I was at school, not only did we never use laptops and computers, even though they existed, we weren't even allowed to use calculators during maths. I remember asking the teacher at the time, Mrs. Garrett, why can't we use calculators? And her being like, uh, well, Glenn, when you're walking around in public as an adult, you're not always going to be able to walk around with a calculator in your back pocket. Well, fucking well. <laughs> haven't, haven't times changed? Because it's 2023, I've got an iPhone in my back pocket as we speak, which has got some very handy apps attached to it, I think you'll all agree. And next to that, I keep my calculator. So fuck you, Mrs. Garrett, I'm not an idiot. I'm not stupid. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you have been so delightful. My name is Glenmore. Goodbye. <laughs>